So today we're going to be taking a look at the Miati 12 volt 16 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Now these things have been going like hotcakes on Amazon. You can actually see a price increase in this specific battery as more and more times they sell out. So let's do our tests. Let's see if it's worthwhile. Today we're going to focus on non-destructive testing again. So we're not going to open up the battery. We're going to keep it in usable state because I actually like this battery a lot and I've got a project that I want to do with it. So, the first thing we're going to do is see if it can pull at least 1C. Now, the spec sheet on this battery says that it can pull 42 amps. That's kind of insane considering this is super lightweight, super tiny, but that's what lithium iron phosphate can do. Instead, we're going to do something much simpler. We're going to do a roughly 2.5C test. And we're going to do this using my favorite tool, my favorite testing tool, cotton candy machine. So we're going to hook it up to the inverter, hook it up to our cotton candy machine, and see if we can pull at least the 470 watts required to run this. And we are on. Let's give it a whirl. So you can actually see it spinning, and we're pulling 474, 473 watt hours or watts out of this battery right now, which is crazy for this size. So we're going to let it run for a few minutes. I'm going to keep the camera going, and we're going to come back and see exactly what we can do with this cotton candy machine, with this, you know, 2.5C rate and this battery. So. I decided to run to the kitchen, grab some flossing sugar, and a cotton candy pole, because let's see if it's actually engaging the heating element, as well as spinning the motor, by making some actual cotton candy. So I'm going to turn it off briefly. So now we have a thermal load in our cotton candy machine. So we're heating up the sponge sugar with the heat from the element, and we'll actually be able to pull I would consider this test a major success. We were actually able to pull our cotton candy, you know, a good amount of cotton candy, using this battery and this battery alone. We were able to get to a peak of 474 watts doing so, and we maintained that long enough to heat the heating element, spin the motor, and make a thing of cotton candy. Let's move on to our next test. Okay, so right now we're going to do our over voltage disconnect testing. I've taken it to the very top of the voltage from charging, and now I'm going to bring it up slowly at about 0.2C to see when the over voltage disconnect triggers or if it'll trigger. Now, for this battery, we're expecting it to trigger at 15.6 volts. So, we'll bring up our current to about 3.4 amps, which is about 0.2C battery's capacity. We might even go a little slower. It's rising quickly. So we'll do about 2 amps and see if we can get it to trigger at that 15.6 cutoff. Fifteen point seven. Oh, there it is. So as soon as we go over 15.6, it cut the current going into the battery. So that is a pass. We have met the spec sheet requirement of 15.6 over voltage disconnect. So the next thing we're going to do is do a full capacity test. So I'm going to let this battery come down a little bit to 13.6, which is our float, and then I will run a capacity test and we'll see the results of that. And we are all wired up for a capacity test. So again, we're looking at the Miati 12.8 lithium iron phosphate 16 amp hour battery. We've got that wired to our little mini bus bars here, and we've connected that to our voltage tester. So I've actually brought this to our float at about 
13.6 volts. So this is going to be as full as we could possibly get. You know, we might actually have some voltage settling that we could still do, but we're going to try and get the maximum voltage out of this battery possible. We're also going to do a test with our multimeter, just so we can ensure that we're at that nice voltage that we're looking for. So we'll connect our leads, and we're seeing 13.6, which is exactly where we want to be for this test. So we're going to use a constant current discharge. So that constant current is going to be 3.2. So that is exactly one-fifth of the battery's rated amperage. So we're going to set that up. And we're just going to hit start. And here we go. We'll check back in in a few. But we're also tracking this data on our computer here. So we'll know exactly the state of charge graph. We'll know exactly how much is coming out. Uh, so we've got two sources of checking, and once again we're on the Miati lithium iron phosphate 12 volt 16 amp hour battery. So we're hoping for 204.8 uh, watt hours, and we'll see what we get. And we're a little under halfway there, and a little under halfway. So we're holding strong, although voltage has dropped to 12.9. So we'll see. All right, three hours and 39 minutes elapsed. We have 11 amp hours out. Again, we're looking for 16 amp hours out of the battery. And that is done. That is 100% of the battery. Wow. All right, so our final thoughts for the Miati 16 amp hour, 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. So we've completed our output test our over-voltage disconnect test, and our capacity test. The battery was able to sustain a roughly 2.5C discharge rate for the duration of our cotton candy machine run. Considering we were able to run a 475-watt load off of a single battery, this is a pretty strong pass in my book. When we tested for an over-voltage disconnect on the BMS, we had the cutoff occur around 15.6 volts. I'm not super happy with that result especially as the 36 amp hour version of this battery has a much lower cutoff at 15 volts. I would make sure when charging this battery to have it connected to a charge controller that lets you set the charging voltage cap to around 14.6 volts. While the internal BMS does provide some protections here, letting the battery stay above 15 volts is outside of my comfort range. So I'll give this section a marginal pass. Finally, we carried out our capacity test. We were able to pull full capacity from this battery using a 0.2C discharge rate. The discharge rate matches what we would expect for the chemistry, keeping the output above 12 volts for roughly 90% of the battery's capacity. I would give this another pass. My overall impression of the battery is pretty high. At the $50 price point, there aren't any other competitors that you can purchase on Amazon. At 16 amp hours, these batteries are great for small scale or hobby systems. The batteries themselves are lightweight and have a very small form factor. If you're just getting into building or designing your own microsystem, these are a great buy. Over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to play around with this battery more and see what we can do to maximize its potential. Thanks for watching.